Today I'm having a look at a network attached storage device. These things are becoming super popular and it's no wonder. They are so easy to set up. Within minutes you can have it running and then drop all your data on it and share it throughout your local network or of course access it remotely on your smartphone or tablet. Now this is the Asus Tor AS5002 model. It's a two bay NAS, a little limiting, but they do have other models. Now let's have a closer look at the box. Beautiful actually, has all kinds of pictures of the product on it, plus features and specifications about it. Let's take a look inside. It's packaged very well between two pieces of quality styrofoam, one at the top, another one at the bottom. The unit itself comes in this plastic bag and there's some other goodies in this box. And in this box are two category 5E network cables, a power cord, the power adapter, screws for mounting the drives, an installation CD, and a quick start guide. Let's first go through some of the features and specifications and then I'll have a closer look at it. It comes with an Intel Celeron 2.41 gigahertz dual core processor. Now it does do bursts up to 2.58 gigahertz, so that's good. It only comes with one gigabyte of memory and the memory that's in this is the low voltage memory, of course is a DDR3, but while it only comes with one gigabyte, you can put up to eight in it and I'll show you how you can do that on the inside in just a minute. Now this particular model comes with two drive bays and you can fit two and a half inch and three and a half inch drives. Just remember to check their compatibility list that's online to make sure that you're purchasing the right drives that will work in this particular unit. And these drives are hot swappable. Also it comes with three USB 3 ports, two USB 2 ports and two eSATA ports as well as two gigabit Ethernet LAN ports. I'll show you all this in just a minute when we have a closer look around as well as an HDMI 1.4a connection as well as an optical connection on the back plus a 70 millimeter fan they as well have an infrared sensor no remote comes with this it is optional this unit consumes next to no power you're talking around 17 watts which is next to nothing when you compare this to a full-blown system that would be at least 250 watts and if you have that system on all of the time it is going to consume an enormous amount of power. So in a way, this kind of pays for itself in that sense. Now let me really quickly go over the software and features on this unit. First of all, it comes like other NASAs with a very intuitive, easy to use Linux operating system that has built in apps and you can install more. I'll be showing you that later on in the video review. The supported operating systems would be the regular ones, Windows XP, Vista 7, 8, plus Windows 10 <laughs> and Server 2003, 2008 and 2012 plus the Mac OS X 10.6 onward, Unix, Linux as well as BDS languages, all kinds of languages supported. Supported browsers, the normal ones, IE 9 and onwards, Firefox, Chrome as well as Safari. Network protocols, Again, I can't go through all of these, just cover a few of them here. HTTP, HTTPS, SMB, plus the file system, internal, EXT4, external, FAT32, NTFS, EXT3, EXT4, plus HFS, plus storage management. Well, all kinds of options here as well. You can do just a bunch of disks, JBOD, RAID 0, and RAID 1, plus iSCSI, and you've got smart scans as well as bad block scans, networking options, you know, TCP, IP, version 4, version 6, and the regular ones, VLAN, you know, you can do wireless network connections with this, um, Cloud Connect, and so on, and a number of backup solutions, RSync, Cloud Backup, FTP Backup, External Backup, and One Touch Backup, as well as system administration tools. You can have real-time online user monitors set up, real-time system monitors, network recycling bin, you know, assign user quotas, set up a virtual drive, you know, get, get this ISO mounting, plus you PS support. And as for access control, well, maximum users you can have is up to 4,096. Maximum number of groups, 
512 maximum number of shared folders the same as well as the number of concurrent connections is the same 512 plus it supports Windows Active Directory. And what would a NAS be without security? You can have a firewall, network defender, set up alert notifications through email or SMS, plus encrypted connections like HTTPS, and connect all kinds of external drives to this because you have USB as well as eSATA ports. You can even have a USB Wi-Fi dongle on this. You can do Wi-Fi support if you have the dongle plus speaker support as well USB printer support and USB DAC IR or infrared receiver keyboard and mouse so you can stick a keyboard and mouse in this and pretty much use it like a regular computer system because it does have an HDMI port, so that's pretty darn cool. Now let's have a closer look. At the top right, there's an IR sensor or infrared sensor. Of course, this is for an optional remote control. You can fit up to two drives in this particular NAS that can either be two and a half inch or three and a half inch drives. And on each one of these drive trays at the top left are status LEDs. If you want to install a drive, just simply press here on the bottom, pull the tray out. The tray is mainly steel, some plastic on it though. Install the drive, again, three and a half inch or two and a half inch drive, and push it right back in. Super, super easy. Plus, you've got a USB 3 connection here on the front. What's this here? Well, it's a status LED plus a copy button. You need to set this up, of course, first in order for it to work, but really convenient. Imagine a thumb drive, connect it, copy, pull it out, you're done. More status LEDs. These are for the network connections plus a power LED and a hard drive activity LED. Here's the power button and their logo at the top left. At the back they include a 70 millimeter exhaust fan. Now this fan will pull in cool air, move it over the drives and then port the warm air out the back. They include an optical connection, HDMI connection, two eSATA connections, two USB 2 ports, two USB 3 ports, two gigabit ports, ports and here is where you would connect the power adapter. If you want to lock this baby up you can because there's provision to have a Kensington lock. As well if you need to remove the cover you can do that by taking off three screws. There's two here and another one at the top. Remember earlier I mentioned that this comes with one gigabyte of DDR3L memory? Well it's here. You can install more though up to eight gigabytes. There's a memory slot here and another one at the top. With one drive installed and the unit powered on, let's have a look at the LEDs. Again, you've got a couple at the top left-hand corner of each drive bay, a power LED, hard drive activity LED, and network LEDs. The cool thing here is you can adjust the brightness on them through the software. You can crank them all the way up, super, super bright, or you can have them dim or completely off, or if you choose to, you can set the LEDs on a schedule, like for example, maybe at 12 midnight, everything is powered off and there's no LEDs. Pretty darn cool. Next, let's see how easy this is to set up and have a closer look at the operating system. Once you have a drive or drives installed and everything connected, go ahead and launch the control center. It will then find the NAS and open up your default browser. You have a couple of choices here between one click setup and a custom setup. I'm going to do the one click setup, enter the server name as well as the password. And this of course should be a fairly strong password. Then go ahead and confirm it. Go next, and once you do that, you just pretty much wait for everything to configure. Next, there's this guide, which will just basically give you an overview of what this NAS can do. It has a storage manager, access control options, plenty of services, tons of apps, as well as backup and restore options, and settings. Now right away you'll probably need to do an update. I'm logged in as the admin and at the top right you've got settings, sleep, restart, shutdown, you can sign out as well. Number of options here. You've got access control, set up local users, local groups, domain users, domain groups, as well as shared folders and application privileges. Within the activity monitor you can see the CPU, memory, network, disk usage, as well as the processes that are running. 
apps, well, there are tons of apps. And if you remember XBMC, which is now Kodi, well, you can install that as well, including Plex, online help, backup restore options. You've got remote sync, FTP backup, external backup, one touch backup. This is pretty darn neat. Remember me mentioning about the one touch button in the front? Well, this is where you set it up. Basically connect what you need to do, press a button, and then set it up here where you want to copy it, as well as system settings. External devices, you have a disc, printer, Wi-Fi, UPS, Bluetooth, an optical drive if you want to. File Explorer, well this is basically a, just a file explorer where you can uh, look at all the different folders that you have and create more. Services, you can have all kinds of uh, options here for Windows, Mac OS, NFS, FTP, WDAV, Web Server, and MySQL, and more. Settings, you've got general, network settings, VPN settings, regional options, hardware notifications, a DM defender, as well as an update here, network recycle bin, energy saver, ease of access. You can set everything to factory default if you want to, and don't forget to register as well. Within the storage manager, well, it shows you information on the storage that you have and system information about the NAS, the network, all kinds of log files. And there's even a doctor, which will basically give you suggestions and whatnot if it thinks that there's something wrong. This is an outstanding network attached storage device and it really goes beyond your typical NAS from years gone by because of course you can connect a keyboard and mouse in this, connect a cable to your TV and voila, you turn this pretty much into a computer system. Now speaking of a computer system, well, this is around $300 to $400 and you're probably thinking, mm, you know, I could build a system for that, but this is a, you know, set and forget kind of unit. It sits in one place. It's never really turned off. If you build a computer system, sometimes there's updates. You uh, were using it for work and games and you restart it and it's a nuisance if someone else is connected to it. This is good with respect to it being on all of the time and all of your data is accessible all of the time from pretty much anywhere at all. And another advantage to this over a computer system is the power savings because a regular computer system will burn around 250 watts. This consumes around 17 watts when it's on, 8 watts in hibernation and 2 watts when it's in sleep mode. So over time, it is going to save you a lot of money. Now keep in mind that this doesn't support 4K TVs and there's only two bays, so capacity is a little limited, but you can go with other models that give you that extra capacity. Without a doubt though, this is a kick-ass product. Until next time, take care.